Hello everybody, I'm David Schiavone. I'm a PhD at ETH Zurich, and I work also in the Pulp project. And today, together with Sanjay from Global Foundry, we are going to talk about our first implementation of our uh, Pulp chip in an advanced technology node as the uh, Global Foundry 22 FDX. So the talk will split in two parts. First, I talk about Pulp, and then Sanjay will cover the Global Foundry part. So let's give a bit of context. So we care about uh, edge processing, so on-chip processing in the IoT uh, domain application, closed-loop system. And for this reason, we actually built Pulp, which is a microcontroller platform, a uh, multi-core microcontroller platform. Uh, Pulp stands for parallel ultra-low power, so we provide high performance in, uh, for very little power consumption. Uh, and this is achieved thanks to smart architecture and parallel processing regarding the high performance part and uh, power aware design, near threshold computation, and low power technology node regarding the low power part. So, Pulp is now a five years old uh, project, and at the beginning of the 2016, we actually became open source free with permissive license. And we started with Palpino, which is a simple single core um, architecture with uh, a couple of IPs like our uh, risky core. Then we've done a couple of updates until the beginning of this year, where we started actually putting open source our l uh, latest Palpissimo platform, which is still single core, but is uh, much more advanced. And, together I will and today I will talk actually about Palpissimo. Then Ariane and Florian, uh, after me, will talk about the 64-bit core. And Open Pulp, which is the name of our multi-core platform with uh, eight cores. And uh, so it basically is a single core uh, architecture extended with a cluster of uh, eight cores. And since we are open source, actually, we've seen a community growing around our project. And here you see a couple of uh, the contributors for Pulp, for instance, uh, is, you heard about Matt, for instance, the latest one, about some bug fixes uh, on the risky core, but also other companies that extended, provided us uh, feedbacks, etc. So this is the Pulpissimo architecture. Differently fr from Palpino, actually, it has a rich set of peripherals with an autonomous, actually, I.O. subsystem, and I'll talk about it later a much more complex uh, uh, memory subsystem. And the implementation that we have done in this specific chip in 22 nanometer has half mega of memory on chip. It's called Quentin for uh, Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> and the uh, rich set of peripherals actually include the standard ones, so I squared C, UART, and other ones, but also high bandwidth peripherals like Quad SPI, camera interface, uh, hyper RAM, etc. It still has our RIS-5 uh, IPs as processing uh, element, as a couple of FLL for power management. And well, let's, let's zoom a bit in the IO subsystem. So basically, all the peripherals are now orchestrated by the microDMA engine. So in Palpino, actually, was the core handling all the software routine to do SPI transfer or UART. Whereas now the core actually just programs the micro DMA and tells him, OK, transfer, transmit, or receive this amount of bits with this peripheral. And then it can go to sleep and wait for an interrupt until the micro DMA is done. Uh, the micro DMA actually is built to be efficient and leverage all the internal bandwidth. So basically, it can store 32 bits per cycle in the, in the memory whatever the buffer size, as is shown in, uh, in the left side of the slide. This is also possible thanks to the efficient um, memory subsystem that we have built. There is a part that is interleaved, so um, data are stored along the memory banks. And this is done to reduce the memory, the, um, the contention between masters. So if both the, the core and the micro DMA are trying to uh, get some data from, the, from that part, actually uh, the contention is reduced once it's stalled and then inside the other. And in the left part, we have a, a non-interleaved memory subsystem, so similar to the one in Palpino, where 
it's meant, for instance, to store the CPU instructions or the data stack, etc. And a part of the memory is actually implemented in a standard cell. And this is because we want to do a near threshold computation, so execute our algorithms beyond the uh, lower bound uh, supply voltage of SRAM. In Quentin, we used uh, the RISCI core uh, with, with the floating point extension from uh, RISC-5 and all the extension coming from uh, our previous, um, previous research on so packet sim, the fixed point, bit manipulation, hardware loop. Um, it has a very high IPC. It can run three, more than three core marks per megahertz. It occupies a relatively low area in uh, Quentin, so just 110 kilogates include the FPU. And here I want really thanks all the contributors that actually used our core, provided us feedbacks in the architecture, reporting bugs, as Matt said during his talk. And we actually improved a lot. And in all our IPs, RISC is the is one example, but also in uh, in the platform per se, software or other IPs. Thanks a lot. Um, but le let's go back to Quentin. So we got a f uh, an area of 2.3 millimeters square. As you can see, it's uh, all, all, all the area is taken by memories. So you see the in the green part there is the interleaved part with the SRAM and a bit of the CM, and the yellow part is the non-interleaved part. So we actually use only a, a, as effective area, so where the things are logically inserted is just 1.2 millimeter square, and the core, micro DMA, all the interconnect actually occupy a very, very little percentage of the total area. Let's go to power and energy and performance. So Quentin can actually run up to more than 500 megahertz at 0 0.8 volt and more than 350 and 0.65. So even if the voltage is quite low at 0.65, you can still have a very high performance. Uh, here I'm running a matrix multiplication where data and uh, everything is stored in SRAM, and I'm just consuming 8.5 milliwatts. So we have actually a very high, um, very high energy efficiency. So the same architecture implemented in another node in 40 nanometer, actually same architecture, but we have 40% more performance and four times higher energy efficiency. And if we move the computation on the SCM part, so we basically put the data instructions in the SCM, we can actually consume even um, lower power, so just 5.5, and reaching even higher uh, energy efficiency. And so this is not, as I'm comparing with the previous technology, this is, of course, thanks to the um, uh, efficient architecture, but also thanks to a very advanced and low power technology. And uh, okay. now Sanjay can cover the global foundry part. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, Barcelona. I hope you all are having a good time last few days. But it looks like um, you all are waiting for a break time, I guess, so I'll make it quick. <laughs> Thanks to David. He already talked about uh, Pulp Project uh, architecture, IO subsystems, and the implementation details. So I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff. So you'll be wondering then, what is the fab guy doing in a RISC-V workshop here? That's because uh, we are from Mars. Yesterday, the keynote, uh, NXP keynote, he said, uh, hardware guys are from Mars. Yes, we are hardware guys, <laughs> right? So what we build is uh, fabs. We have fabs across the globe, as you see from um, US, Europe, and Asia across them. On the left, uh, 14 nanometer, seven nanometer, FinFET technologies are in uh, uh, New York, Malta. It is in production right now. It is a state-of-art fab. And then the next is uh, dressed in Germany. We are doing a 22 nanometer, 28 nanometer, and 12 nanometer technologies. It is here in uh, Europe. And we also announced recently a China-focused fab with uh, doing a 130 nanometer and 22 nanometer FDX as well. That is driving uh, heavily into the um, edge computing and the ecosystem in China as well. And uh, the older, uh, older process node technologies, like 180 nanometer to 140 nanometers, uh, we have a Singapore uh, fab as well. 
And the other two fabs are East Fishkill and Burlington are from um, acquisition from IBM Microelectronics and a trusted foundry in US, again in the New York foundry. The key message here is uh, we have a total capacity of about 10 million wafers here. So what I'm trying to talk here is um, we want to enable and drive RISC-V ecosystem. We want to build uh, these billions of RISC-V cores in this fab. So we have a capacity on this. Okay. With that, let me show you the uh, roadmap here. We have a dual track roadmap. 28 nanometer is a bulk technology base. From there, we have two tracks here. On the left, you see the FinFET technology going into performance optimized, where you drive uh, very high performance applications in the uh, server technologies in uh, x86 platforms or in any, of the, any other server platforms or um, uh, graphics cards or switches, routers in the networking platforms or base stations kind of things. So today, Global Foundries is in a production with uh, 14 nanometer FinFET with uh, x86 uh, AMD processors and uh, Power9 with uh, IBM processors and also ARM-based processors as well. And we want to build a similar supercomputers and the processors on the right side as well. Now, moving on to the right side, where you have the FDSOI technology. This is the planar technology. We are bringing the differentiation into the industry. We are the only fab in the world today have these leading edge technologies on both the FinFET and the planar side uh, uh, driving the leading edge technologies here. 22 FDSOI has a, a unique capabilities. It has a body bias technique where you can vary the process voltage to variations, uh, forward biasing and the backward biasing, you can reduce and play with the voltages. And it runs on uh, subthreshold variable subthreshold voltages, 0.4 to 0.8 voltages. So you can run the systems in uh, the edge computing applications, or inferencing applications, artificial intelligence, or some of these uh, autonomous car application vision uh, recognition applications type, and also the RF, um, radio frequency applications in the base stations or mobile phones as well in this technology. We have a roadmap with the 22 and then going further to the 12 FTX as well. The beauty here is that this product line is in uh, Dresden, Europe, the fab is. Okay. I think yesterday Martin Fink talked about uh, the need of uh, big data and fast data and the ideal fit with risk 5 on this. So I want to add one more thing on top of it is um, real-time data processing. What we are seeing more and more is uh, edge computing is becoming more essential in the, in the industry today. Applications like um, intelligent applications like uh, drone applications or IP cameras, security cameras or body cameras, they are becoming more and more prevalent and they're all requiring some kind of computing function on board, which is a, you can call it inferencing application or training or learning application, whatever it is, right? So typically when a camera is uh, put on, uh, is, is a camera not always in an active mode, so it is most of the time is in a sleep mode, so the power consumption is very low. Whenever it needs to be activated, that's when the computing starts happens. So we think uh, that's where exactly the 22FDX with the risk 5 is a great fit. Because when you want to put it in a compute mode, automatically it goes into uh, subthreshold where performance mode and the computing mode, and 22 FDX gives you the best power there. So that's where if you want to run in a, a lower performance, 0.4 voltage, you can run it in a battery operated and with the lowest leakage there in the IoT applications, um, edge inferencing applications, and RF applications, like I mentioned earlier. Automotive is also another big area, so we are seeing uh, a lot more adoption in. Um, uh, China, Europe, and U.S. markets are here on this. Risk five is another key area we are heavily uh, proliferating and also enabling in these markets. So let me talk about that. So we build an ecosystem for these products, especially. I mean, typically any fab will build probably will build these uh, EDA tool vendors, IP vendors, ASIC vendors, or software design services, OSAT partners. But here, the key takeaway I want to bring in is the Risk five ecosystem. What we are doing on this. In the risk 5 side, um, uh, we're working with um, RTOs, the research technology organizations like uh, Leti, IMEC, or Fraunhofer in uh, Europe, and the university academia like ETH Zurich. We just talked about pilot project. And we're also working with uh, Berkeley University as well as IIT Chennai universities. That is for, to drive the IP and uh, um, the performance power optimizations through the process and risk 5 but now, on top of it, for the commercial engagement also, we have established a partners across the globe. Sci-Fi, 
um, integrating the sci-fi with uh, a flexible business model IP for 32-bit, 64-bit IP cores in US, driving into data center applications with their cores, and a reduced energy microsystems. This is also in US. They are all primarily targeted into robotics and drones, uh, camera applications. There is also IP, RISC-V IP is uh, hardware validated. They are already tipped out. By the way, I did not mention that we have about, uh, we published recently 36 design wins and then 10 different market segments. So RISC-V is uh, at least five of those designs, RISC-V is in design today. It's not in production yet, but it is in design. And then the last but not the least is uh, Andis. Charlie just showed you earlier the results and benchmarking data on their RISC-V course that is on uh, 22 FTX platform, basically. So, so, and this is proliferating in the uh, China market, and we are also continue to work in uh, Europe also as well to drive this ecosystem on this. That, that's my last slide with that. And the summary, you want to talk uh, about okay, it? Okay, I can do the yeah. summary. Uh, yeah, conclusion, yeah. yeah. And just to conclude, here we show our uh, first step actually uh, towards silicon proven RIS-5 uh, chips based on, in this case, in our uh, pulp architecture. We actually seen that the compound of these two, we can actually achieve very high energy efficiency, still providing high performance. Um, in this particular chip, we didn't uh, mention and implemented any body bias, but actually this is on uh, yeah. in the uh, roadmap. And what we did today, we presented Quentin, um, which is our palpissimo, in particular, platform in uh, uh, FDSOI 22. We've shown uh, very little power consumption and uh, higher perform high performance and energy efficiency. And I hope you liked the talk. And with this, we are done. Thanks a lot. Thank you.